and give you our praise to them. you lift your hands up with your eyes closed just for one minute you're gonna ask God to release a word to you tonight a word that will change in your life a word that will turn your life around if you can speak in tongues please do it for the next one minute I want the whole house to be filled with the spirit of the living God Thank you, Spirit. Let me go. Thank you, Jesus. Georgia, I was afraid to do so. 
And God said, call your brother. Because he had gone ahead and church planting. And I called him and I said, y'all. God said, I should do this. And he said, do it. And, and we sat together and put everything together. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When he needed to write his books, it was in my house. My mother was there. I told him, y'all, write your books. His first book he ever wrote was, was inspired by Sonny Badu. I believe that's what Brotherhood is about. Ten, we go more than 10 years, but look at what we're celebrating. Thank you for having me here. I am truly honored one more time. Help me to celebrate God. I'm going to be out of your way in a few seconds as Dr. Lawrence Tetter is on his way coming, so I'm just clearing the way for him to come. And I'm going to speak quickly on the message titled, Mantle in the Grave. Mantle in the Grave. Man, don't sit down yet. Don't sit down yet. Mantle in the Grave. I'm going to read a few scriptures and then we take off with the word of God. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 37 to 40, English Standard Version. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 37 to 40 from the English Standard Version. I want everybody to take note of every single scripture I'm going to read because I will knit them together. And if you miss it, you've missed it so bad. Emmanuel Smith is the biggest UK artist rocking London ever since I left. And Emmanuel, I'm so proud of you, of, of what you're doing, holding on to the mantle that I left in England moving to America. I'm so proud of you. And he sold out the O2 Arena. Um, the gospel music fraternity should be talking about Emmanuel Smith. He's already sold out the, the O2 Arena. Please help me to celebrate God on behalf of Emmanuel Smith. Pastor William Amsterdam, you are a perfect protege for the, the servant of God. You're so loyal and faithful. God bless you. Let me read this quickly. And the Bible says, answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O God, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned the heart back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Can I have a bit of depth in the microphone? Seize the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they seized the 450 prophets of Baal. And Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slaughtered all of the 450 prophets. Elijah cut off all their heads. 450 prophets. Elijah beheaded. Remember this. Elijah beheaded all 450 prophets. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 8, 1 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 1 to 8. New King James Version. And I read, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. With the sword, he beheaded all of them. Remember this, don't forget this. With the sword, he beheaded all of them. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time, by tomorrow at this time, I will behead you. Remember this? Jezebel tells, sends a message to Elijah that by tomorrow at this time, I swear by my gods that I will behead you. 
Remember this, the same way you have beheaded 450 prophets of mine. And when he saw that message, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah and left his seven there. Elijah did not take any of the seven with him. He left all of them there and ran to Bathsheba. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the broom tree and he prayed that he might die. Elijah didn't fight Jezebel back. He runs and prayed that he might die and said, it is enough Lord, now take my life for I'm no better than my father's. Then as he lay down and slept under the broom, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise, eat. Then he looked and there by his head was cake, was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back to him the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Follow me carefully. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. New International Version. Watch this. Fifty men from the company of the prophet went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at Jordan. Somebody say had stopped at Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water was divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over on the dry ground. Now the last scripture. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 14 New King James Version. Then he took the mantle. Somebody say then he took the mantle. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water just as Elijah did. Elisha takes the mantle and then he struck the water and then he he said, where is the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, it was divided in, it was divided this way and that way. And Elisha crossed the river. This as Elijah did. Lord, breathe through me as I breathe on your children. Somebody shout amen three times. Yes, 2024, please be seated. I'm speaking to you briefly on a message titled Mantle in the Grave. Mantle in the Grave. Mantle in the Grave. Ladies and gentlemen, when we say mantle or we hear mantle, what do we understand by mantles because it is used often in the Old Testament. A mantle or mantles are or wear garments or cloaks are or wear garments of cloaks of outfits that were worn by prophets. In this day and age, we use anything as a mantle. But in the Old Testament, when we heard mantles or clothes, they were garments or clothes that prophets wore. When you saw a prophet move uh, in, in that cloak, it means they were. Or when you saw somebody move in that cloak, you would recognize them as a prophet. And ladies and gentlemen, the clothes were made out of animal skin, out of the sheep skin. So a sheep skin was designed as a coat or a cloak, and the prophets were the only ones that wore it as mantles. Somebody say mantles. Now, biblically, prophets were known for wearing mantles, and it was a sign of their callings and identity. 
sanctifications. So in Genesis chapter, in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 13, English Standard Version, the Bible says, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his clothes and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here? The mantle on every prophet is an indication of authority and responsibility as God has spoken to man. So when you are seen in a mantle, you are seen as one that God speaks through you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when Elijah threw his cloak to Elisha, it was a symbol of him giving him his ministry. It was a, a, a jacket, a coat, a very long one. When he took it off and he threw it to Elisha, it was a symbol of his ministry being handed over to Elisha. And a, a lot of theologians see the mantle also as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so when, when, when we see people being anointed and we hear spiritual father say, I, I, I release my mantle over you, it is now a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Now ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask a very important question. Have you ever wondered why John the Baptist was beheaded? Have you ever thought about why the cousin of Jesus Christ was beheaded? The one that baptized Jesus, the one that endorsed Jesus' ministry was beheaded and he was beheaded when Jesus was alive. I never saw any disciple die whilst Jesus was alive. But this very cousin of Jesus Christ is beheaded whilst Jesus is alive. Have you thought why this happened? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is very simple. It is because a mantle was not given to him for the battle he had to fight. Oh, you're going to get it very soon. The reason why John the Baptist lost his head on a silver platter is because a mantle was not given to him. A mantle was not given to him for the battle he had to fight. I is tonight one of my assignments, one of Pastor Brian's assignment is very simple. Tonight our assignment is to give back to somebody a mantle that you lost. Our assignment here is to give back to a generational changer a mantle that you missed. Our assignment tonight is to turn a life around. I mean a life that missed its mantle. I mean I is a mantle that will take you to your next level. I don't know who I can for. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but 600 people or 35 people who will shout a big amen here and until will be released to you. If you're the one shout, I am the one. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10, New International Version. The Bible says this clearly, that since then, Moses, who transferred a mantle to Joshua, Moses, the servant of God, had a certain mantle, and this mantle that Moses had was a major mantle that crossed seas. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Hear me and understand that Moses carried a mantle that crossed seas. And Moses has also been endorsed as the greatest prophet amongst all of them. Deuteronomy 34 10. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Moses did mighty and powerful things until then, no man on earth has ever done anything that Moses 
Moses did on earth. Ladies and gentlemen, in Moses' era, he had the mantle in his staff. And every time he lifted the staff, miracles happened. Red seas opened into Sioux. No man on earth had ever performed such miracles. When Moses' time was done, watch this. The Lord told him to hand over power. Prophet Yah, come over. The Lord told him, please help me to celebrate Dr. Lawrence Tetter. Of serving them, 
I can still invite them to my church in Atlanta. And every time they come, they say, son, we are so proud of you. And I tell the church, whatever you're seeing, these are the fathers that gave me the mantle. Ghana, may I suggest something that the reason why we are frustrated in the season is because a mantle has not been released to us from the fathers. And some of the fathers have either gone into the grave with a mantle or some of them have buried the mantle in pain or offense. A father can be offended and instead of giving the mantle to him, he buries it. A father can refuse to release a mantle out of disloyalty, out of dishonesty, out of betrayal. But tonight we have a father who is here who will release a mantle all over this house and anyone that missed it along the line, the mantle for prosperity shall be restored unto you. Somebody shout, I need the mantle. Shout to the name of the Lord. I need the mantle. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this very carefully. So Elisha goes to the grave with the mantle. Why? Because he cursed Gehazi. And so the mantle that was transferred to Joshua from Moses to cross the Jordan River and Elijah picks the mantle on the cloak and crosses the Jordan River and gives Elisha the anointing to cross the Jordan River. Elisha goes into his grave with a mantle. Now ladies and gentlemen, there is a big problem in the land. There is a big problem. Please remember this, that Elijah, Elijah, not Elisha, Elijah caused a big problem and ran away. Elijah waged war between him and Jezebel and then run away. Number two, remember this, Elijah did not die. Elijah left in an unnatural manner. Elijah was taken through a chariot of fire and then he leaves the mantle behind. So his mission was unaccomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens. Remember that when he left, Jezebel had sworn that just as you killed my 450 men, I will kill you. This I will behead you the same way you beheaded my 450 men. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the mantle is in the grave. Elisha is holding onto it. The mantle is in the grave. Elisha is holding onto it in the grave. And then what happens will shock you. Elijah returns. Elijah returns back on earth. Let me say it a third time. You're confused. Elijah returns back on earth. Matthew chapter 11, verse 13 to 15, New International Version. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if you are willing, John is the Elijah who was to come. Jesus said, John is the Elijah who was to come. And ladies and gentlemen, we realize that the new Elijah who was to come is stuck on the Jordan River, baptizing people and not able to cross because the mantle is missing. Oh, you're not getting it. It might be deep, but you gotta catch it. <laughs> John the Baptist comes as the new Elijah, but he ends up on the same river 
that they were crossing in and out. Elisha doesn't release the mantle. So Elijah, who comes back as John the Baptist, cannot leave the river because there's no mantle in his hands. Oh my God. Then the next thing that happens will surprise you. Herodias, who is another form of Jezebel, married to a king, becomes an enemy to John the Baptist. The same way Elijah was an enemy to Jezebel. Remember Jezebel said, I will cut off your head. So John the Baptist begins to talk against Herodias. The same way Elijah was an enemy to Jezebel, John the Baptist is also an enemy to Herodias. And one day something strange happens. Please help me to welcome Prophet Kofi Ojo. One day, ladies and gentlemen, watch this. Something strange happens. Something strange happens. The daughter of Herodias begins to dance. And as she dances, Herod was pleased. And Herod asked a question. What do you want from me? And Herodias' daughter runs to the mother, Jezebel. And the mother told him, get the head of John the Baptist for me. Ladies and gentlemen, reverse back. Elijah didn't finish. Elijah didn't defeat Jezebel. He runs away from Jezebel. And Jezebel meets him in the form of John the Baptist and demands for the head of John the Baptist. The same way, the same way Elijah killed. Oh, you will get it very soon. Some of us have done nothing wrong. The only thing wrong we have done is that we are walking in an ancient anointing that the fathers did not defeat the enemy of that unction. We are walking in a mantle that has a battle that the fathers did not defeat. Elijah could not defeat Jezebel and Jezebel shows up as Herodias. Elijah shows up as John the Baptist and the same promise Jezebel promises Elijah he cuts off the head just as Elijah cut off 450 heads so ladies and gentlemen the head of John the Baptist being chopped off was an old bottle that came back in the new generation because nobody did anything about crossing the river the youth is demanding for unction, but they are not looking for the fathers who own the mantles. The youth are crying for anointing, but the fathers who are carrying the unction are not being honored. Something is wrong with Ghana. Something is wrong with our nation. A nation that used to win soccer games, you could go and know that Ghana will win. Right now, we could score two zero. And in the final 90th minute, whilst you're going to drink water, I almost had a cardiac arrest. I told my wife, Finito, you're winning. My shame, my money, not Jesse. Someone here, you're winning. My buyer, I said, oh, you're free. I could not tell my wife who is Jamaican what happened. I've kept it to myself. Ah! So, who has cursed us? Say, Enitia, your friend, you Enitia. You need to be just at the end of A Jamaican or do want to be a seer out of hurt, out of pain that the children are suffering. Some of you will go online. Dr. Lawrence that just said this, and some of you young ones are the ones that will comment because they paid you five Ghana mm. to comment. <laughs> you exchange five Ghana with a man's anointing that you saw somebody kneel before him to lay hands on. 
Oh, you craft out here. Five dollars job it. Oh my, a Janet's not a dem. A suit. Oh, I'm kissing for that. If you have never crossed where he has gone, never dare push your fingers to disrespect him. Why are 10 years? Me can't hear. Me past 17, pen they break it through. 10 years. I saw last year's here. The whole place was filled. Me past 17. The equation is not right. Papa, I saw you say, yeah, wonder. Yeah, wonder. The, the level of wisdom that he has. If seven people listen to him for one month, what? <laughs> Seven people. If you are to listen to him for one month, one month, you're dead because he speaks the truth. Because a man page are trending, you are losing the mantles for the battles in your father's house. The reason why the nation is suffering is because the fathers have buried the mantles. But today we plead for mercy. Let the fathers forgive. Let the fathers forgive. And let them release the mantle for our battle. Seven or ten years ago, the Black Stars did well. There was Dr. Lori Setti that led them from the aeroplane. About, about that. He came, oh no, no, no. When Black Stars, the Abedi Pennies, Stanley Abura, Safu Jemfi, Odata Lamte, Abdade Kuma, Edward Asa, Otto Fista. No, no. And when they are coming, this man is their chaplain. You don't understand. This man, I, I'm a son now. He's a chaplain. He walks around them. They like a like a Behave yourself. Let them stay away for a while. So I know we need trophy. We have cleared the fathers, so they've hid their mantles in their pockets. Did you not hear Archbishop Ajinasari yesterday? He said something very deep. He said, anyone who contests with my son know that I have built a foundation. Right now, the fathers have decided to give the mantles to their son. But hear me, may I break protocol and say, it's not every son that deserves a mantle. It's not every biological son, may I break it. Because some people, Whilst they were sweating, some biological sons were in universities in Oklahoma. But guess what? Your Gehazios unction is what caused the fathers to hold it back. Tonight, if there is anything we need, when the father mounts the stage, any mantles the father's buried, may it be released from this altar. You're not hearing me. Some of you, your fathers made errors, and you have become to the baptisms. Who is paying the price for errors and mistakes of your fathers? But tonight, I go on my knees and ask prayers for mercy. Our music will not be invaded. Our football will not be invaded. There is a youth here. There is somebody here who's about to rise. Somebody here, as you're crying, 